Brian Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. AM 630. 637 on WMAL. Coming up on the show later this morning, we got Joe DeGeneva, our legal expert, right after the news at 7 o'clock. Trevor Maddich will be here at 736. We'll talk about the NFL playoffs and Tim Tebow doing it again yesterday right, against the Steelers. Tucker Carlson live from New Hampshire. There you go. New primary coming up tomorrow there. Obviously, the debates over the weekend. And Carrie Pickett from the Washington Times also coming up in the 8 o'clock hour live from New Hampshire. That's all to come here on the morning majority. Got some very sad news yesterday. Today, and I was really surprised to hear Tony Blankley died at the age of 63. Tony's been probably on this radio station as a guest or a guest host for 20 years now, certainly for the last 10 years since uh, I started working here. And obviously, he did some unbelievable things during the Reagan uh, years as a speechwriter, worked with Newt Gingrich, was his press secretary, great conservative writer, a columnist, worked for the Washington Times, um, very influential, great thinker. And I have to say, Say, listen, there will be a lot more important people than me who talk about Tony Blankley today. But I, I got to know him, and I've always loved reading him. I've always enjoyed listening to him on the radio or seeing him on television. But he came in on a regular basis um, starting last year and would uh, do guest hosting with me. Mm-hmm. Just an absolutely wonderful man. Yeah. Just a great human being, a great thinker, very gracious, uh, quick-witted. The depth of knowledge that he had yeah. was breathtaking from everything from Hollywood. Because he was a child actor, actually. I know. I didn't even know that until yesterday. Apparently, most people did, but I had missed I, that entirely. His dad was Winston Churchill's accountant, so came from Britain, but loved America and you know loved the relationship with Britain. But I, I just I learned a lot from him. But more than anything, I just came away always. He was just a perfect gentleman, a wonderful thinker. Uh, could articulate his ideas very quickly and really just enjoyed discussing politics. Yeah, I, I was very saddened to hear the news. It was quite a surprise. Uh, I guess I knew that he had battled cancer, but I thought it was it was it was under control or that he was he was doing OK mm-hmm. with it. Um, stomach cancer. That's a bad one. That's a tough one. But it was just a month ago. No, he was on this radio show uh, and I and I asked him a question about his past relationship with Newt Gingrich and whether he ever thought Newt, uh, you know, would be where he is today. Tell I recall very clearly, you know, seeing you around the halls, hanging out with Newt yep. and you were there during those days. <laughs> Did you ever imagine back then? That that Newt Gingrich would be seriously considered as as a presidential candidate. Well, if if I'm under oath, I have to say actually yes. <laughs> really, you did. <laughs> now, I mean, as as the years progressed, I understood that that you know that all the wounds you take in, in in years of battle with you know between Newt and Clinton and and all the things that one does uh, made it less likely. Uh, and I think I'm sort of pleasantly, slightly surprised at how well he's doing, but. Uh, I thought when when I started working with him after uh, a couple of years that, that he had a vision of the future and, and it was unlimited potentially. So uh, I'm I'm one of the guys who uh, thought he was uh, right. potentially going to go to the top from from the beginning. It's a voice we're going to miss for sure. Yeah, I mean he was he was a lovely guy, great sense of humor, a snappy dresser. Uh-huh. Well, Man, that, he was a he he, was. he knew how to to rock the old double breasted suit. I'll tell you. I feel like there's a it's not that often that you meet people who've been in politics for a long time, been in Washington for a long time, and then they come out the other end cheery and kind and charming and seem like a real person. A lot of times if you get caught up in the machinery here, uh, that doesn't happen. And he just uh, he just seemed like such a warm, kind person, always had a good attitude, and I love the snappy dressing because this town is full of droids (laughs) who all dress alike and can't possibly step out of line with a different color tie and that dude knew how to do it he was the best dresser you've ever (laughs) seen i was telling my wife about that last night like really i was like i'm telling you there's nobody who wore he not only was the suit great but he wore it great no like he sits down and he's like he's on the mclaughlin group in like an orange shirt and an orange tie and he's like what (laughs) what and and it worked yes it was like yeah awesome (laughs) 
a great sense of humor. You know, he, he always had a great story to tell. But, I mean, he was there during during the big revolution up on Capitol Hill that put the Republicans first in charge. Uh, he was there as Newt's right-hand guy. And more than just a guy who wrote speeches or talking points for Newt, I think, I think he was a guy that Newt leaned on quite a bit, and the Republicans leaned on. He was a wise man. And, and you know, you got to understand, this guy came to this country from England. He was a naturalized citizen. He loved this country as much as any American you, that I've ever met. He also had what a lot of people don't have these days, including pol- politicians, that is optimism. Yes. He was always optimistic. He wrote a piece, a great piece, about, look, you know, America has been through a lot of tough times in the past. Yes, this recession is horrible. It's affected, you know, millions of people, and it may get worse before it gets better. But come on. You know, pick yourself up. We're going to be okay. We're going to get through this no matter what because we are America. And it was just a powerful piece. I remember it. And he, I remember him telling me off the air and said, look, you know, I'm battling stomach cancer. I mean, I've, I've looked at death right in the eye. And, yes, I don't want to die. I want to stay here. But, come on, we can, we, we're going to be okay. Right. And I, I don't know if it was that. But he was always optimistic even before then. But um, just – uh, just a really great guy. He always he he was interested in other things besides politics. He liked liked pop culture a lot. I right. was just so surprised at. Uh, I mean, he knew Kim Kardashian. He knew who she was. <laughs> didn't mind talking about her. We did a talk topic one morning that he wanted to do, which was what things were you uh, aren't you, are you not allowed to do today as a kid that you were when huh. we were kids. I like that. And he loved it. It was fascinating. Well. Too. I, for one, am going to go back and look at some Lassie episodes and try to find <laughs> little Anthony Blankley. Apparently, because he had a British accent, he was able to land more roles because they needed little British kids. And he was in the 1956 Humphrey Bogart film, The Harder They Fall. How cool is that? It's a great, really cool American story. Hollywood, Washington, he's got it all. Yeah, he will be sorely missed. Tony Blankley, dead at the age of 63 mm-hmm. from stomach cancer. We had him on the show about a month ago. I saw him on CNN not Sounded too long ago. Sounded and looked I, great. I, I thought, I thought. Doing, I didn't realize that um, it was as bad as it was. Um, so Tony Blankley will be sorely missed um, yeah. by everyone at WMAL, by everyone who listens to this radio station, and by Republicans, Democrats, and Americans, and you know human beings everywhere. Because we, we lost a good guy. Yeah, rest in peace.